Are you ready for some more real estate knowledge today? I'm so excited for this topic because it's something that so many people don't really understand that well. And we're going to talk about the difference between ROI and ROE. I know it's kind of boring, but it's so important if you want to really supercharge your returns on your portfolio. So return on investment, as you probably know, is the total profit divided by your initial investment. So if you profit $10,000, and your initial investment's $100,000, your total ROI is 10%. ROE is your return on equity, and it's your total profit divided by your total equity. So if you just purchased a property and you spent $100,000, you take and you earn $10,000, your ROE is also 10%. Now, here's something interesting that most people don't realize. Your ROI pretty much always goes up, and your ROE pretty much always goes down. And here's why, because your initial investment never changes, but rents generally go up over time. So your expenses will go up, your rents will go up, and your profits will go up, or the total actual dollar amount of profits will go up, but your initial investment will never change. So when this number, when your profit goes up and your initial investment doesn't change, what happens? Your returns go up every year. So imagine this year you have $10,000, in, in profits, but then rents go up over the next five years, and then maybe five years from now, you have $12,000 in profits, right? So $10,000 this year versus $12,000 in five years from now. Now your denominator is still $100,000. So what happens is your return goes from 10% to 12%, your ROI has gone up. Your ROI has gone from 10 to 12%. So now let's look at your return on equity. I'm just gonna write this over here. So you have uh, 10 to 12%, right? So let's say something happens over here. Your total profit is going to go up as well. So let's just say it goes from 10,000 to 12,000, okay? But here, the number is gonna change. So you, your initial investment, so day one of purchasing, and let's assume you didn't add any value, you have $100,000 in equity, so you have 10%, right? But now, let's say over here, there's some appreciation as well. There's some appreciation. Let's just say this goes up to $120,000. So now, you have $120,000 in equity because of dep uh, appreciation and equity pay down as well. And you'll see that your return is still 10%. Now, if you're in a hot market and you really pay down a lot of the equity and you really get a lot of appreciation, let's just say, let's just make the numbers easy so I can do it in my head. Let's say you've paid down some equity, but you're in a crazy hot market and you've had some serious appreciation. Now you have $240,000 in equity. What do you think happens to this number right here, right? If my math is right, that's a 5% return. That's a 5% return. So the more equity you have in a property, the lower your overall returns are, right? So even if your income is going up, your returns are actually going down. And that's really important. And that's why a lot of investors say you should never pay off your property because the more equity you have, the lower your returns get. Now, you want to balance, right? So your return on equity, uh, it might depend on where you are in your retirement cycle. If you want to retire soon, you might want more equity and lower returns because of lower risk. If you're a newer investor, you might want to have higher returns and higher risk. So you got to determine what your return goals are. But you need to understand the difference between ROI and ROE in order to help you make your best investing decisions. Because if you don't understand the difference, then you're always gonna think you're earning more and more money over time when you're actually earning less. In theory, you could sell the property or refinance and then reallocate that money to something that's more productive. It's easy in real estate to beat 5%, right? So if you could take out, take out a, um, you could refinance or sell, capture this equity and reinvest it in multiple other properties or the stock market or something else, you can take this 5% and move it up to 10%. That's why you need to understand. But if you're looking at this exact same situation, you're going to think you're earning 12% and that's good. So you might not make a decision. So it can hold back your growth if you don't understand the difference between these two.
My name is Eric Bolin, IdealREI.com, and I want you to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I want you to come back and get more real estate education so that you can achieve your goal of achieving financial independence with real estate investing.